Join Mark and Trina Hankins as we start the new year off with three days of teaching on the spirit of faith. Get ready to receive the word, have your faith ignited, and to break the barriers in your life in 2024. You don't want to miss these powerful three days in our new conference center, January 9th through the 11th, 2024. For more information and to register, please visit markhankins.org. It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. And so when you meditate on the Word of God, we're going to look at several scriptures on how to meditate on the Word, captures your imagination. And uh, when it captures your imagination, that's really a part of what you'd call revelation, revelation knowledge is, uh, I like what I heard Dad Hagen say many years ago, we were talking about and he's, uh, the Word, and he, I think we were talking about uh, the blood of Jesus. And he said, um, he said, uh, use your spiritual imagination, use your spiritual imagination and see yourself coming boldly into the presence of God. So the Holy Spirit is able to paint on the canvas of your mind, the picture of a spiritual reality. And you see yourself enjoying the benefits of the blood of Christ, faith in that blood and see yourself going right into the very holy presence of God. So he said, use your spiritual imagination. It's interesting that you say the anointing comes on you. You know, um, sometimes we limit the uh, application of the anointing. The anointing comes on your mind and it comes into your imagination. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, it's, if you're anointed, you got the glory of God on you. Mm. And that means that there's an atmosphere mm. of miracles Yeah, as you meditate on the Word of God. Well, it's the anointing that the Scripture says destroys yes. the yoke of bondage. In other words, any kind of a bondage is the anointing. So when you meditate on the Word, that anointing comes up into your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and destroys... Um, bad imaginations. Mm -hmm. uh, it destroys uh, old thoughts and attitudes, the anointing, so that the new creature and the reality of who you are in Christ and what God has done for you in Christ now comes up and gets on your, your soul. And then that overflows into your body. And so when you meditate on the Word, you're taking spiritual realities from the Word of God and you're allowing that to capture your imagination. The Word of God is spirit. Jesus said, my words are spirit mm -hmm. and they are life. And um, they work. They're spiritual healing words. And then they work in your spirit. And that's where healing begins mm -hmm. is in your spirit. Sometimes you're saying, God, just take, make this pain go away, you know, mm -hmm. very quick. <laughs> but if we'll meditate on the Word, it's that anointing. It sets us free, not only physically, but emotionally and in our soul, our mind, and we're completely whole, spirit, soul, and body. Yeah, spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> so for the Word to work for you, then you have to be a doer of the Word. And the, the, the next step from believing the Word of God is to allow that word to capture your mind, your thought life, your imagination. So Smith Wigglesworth said something one time. He said, if the enemy knows if he can capture your thought life, mm -hmm. he has won a great victory. And so uh, you cannot keep thoughts from coming to your mind, but you can keep them from uh, staying there. You mm -hmm. can't keep who knocks on your door. You can decide who you want to let in. Mm -hmm. And so dealing with... Um, the devil with his thoughts and suggestions 
right when they come to your mind, whether it's doubt or whether it's fear or whether it's lack or whether it's uh, strife or whether it's unforgiveness, whatever it is, whether it's sin or disobedience, whatever it is, you deal with it right there mm -hmm. and you have authority. In other words, as a believer, if you don't exercise your authority in mm -hmm. your thought life, you'll never exercise your authority in your uh, outside life. It's so true. A lot of times, uh, you know, if you don't understand that, you just feel like, okay, if I'm religious, if I go to church and all these things will be okay. And uh, just for a few moments at yeah. church, your mind gets on the Lord. You start feeling better. And then you go back home and you just revert back to old ways of thinking. And then you think, well, that didn't help me at all. But if we keep our minds mm. stayed on God, yeah. then we have perfect peace. Yeah, And uh, those thoughts... You said we have to cast down yeah. imaginations and high things that yeah. exalt themselves against the knowledge of God or the Word of God. Yeah. So here's another great scripture in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, verse 12, he says, We preach the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. uh, which the angels desire to look into. Yeah. And so that's a tremendous verse, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. But verse 13 is a very interesting verse because he says, now you know the gospel, you got the Holy Ghost, you got angels, you know, and then he says, now gird up the loins of your mind. Interesting. Be sober and hope yeah. to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Be obedient children, not uh, fashion yourselves according to the former lust and your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, be also holy in all your manner of lifestyle. God said, be holy for I am holy. And so he says, and, and for as much as you know you're redeemed, verse 18, uh, not with silver and gold, verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot there. But the one phrase I wanted you to see was mm -hmm. uh, um, gird, up, gird the up the loins of your mind in verse 13. But then if you look down to verse, when you keep reading, he says in verse 22, he says, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren as you love one another with a pure heart fervently. So he says, you have uh, purified your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions again. So he says, gird up the loins of your mind. You have purified your soul. And um, it's very interesting when he says here, gird up the loins of your mind. So really, when he connects the loins of your mind, then he's really saying the, the part of mankind, which is the part of procreation, gird up the, the creative part of you, which he says the loins of your mind. In other words, uh, make sure that your mind is being used appropriately when it comes to the Word of God and God's thoughts and God's ways. I mean, just think of the the ability that you have to take the Word of God and think God's thoughts. And so when you meditate on God's thoughts, so if you want to study the mind of a genius, just read the Bible because this is the way God thinks. And so he says, gird up the loins of your mind. In other words, your mind has that capacity to really create and produce those things in your life if you keep thinking about it. So you need to paint a picture through meditating on the Word of God, use your imagination, create a new world, so to speak, or paint a picture, like you said, on mm -hmm. the canvas, the Word of yeah. God will paint a new yeah. picture on the canvas of your imagination, mm -hmm. Lord. Um, it's interesting. This is nothing new. It's mm -hmm. been around. This God made us this way. And um, so we... Function that way. I like a story in Genesis 31 about Jacob and how that uh, he had his father's yeah. uh, flocks and he wanted to have, he said, I'll take all the spotted and the speckled cattle. And um, so he, his wealth, his future was in the fact that these animals would multiply mm -hmm. and he would get a whole lot of 
uh, streaked or spotted, spot, spotted, yeah. speckled. <laughs> well, 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 Laban, yeah. Laban had stolen from Jacob. Yes. And uh, Laban had limited Jacob. And so that's when Jacob said, well, let me make a deal with you that looked like it'd be totally to Laban's advantage. <laughs> but in Genesis 31, when Jacob, um, he, he built that wall and, and got the spotted and speckled uh, calves. And wow, what an amazing thing. Because really, uh, it almost appears that he changed the genetics of those calves. And, uh -huh. and so he got all the spotted and speckled, I think. It says, uh, this is in Genesis 31. Yeah, and he saw that wall with a reflection on him. Yes. Yeah. And such a great illustration right here in the Word of God about how physical things can change using... Uh, your faith and your imagination. How Jacob, he said in verse 10, he said, I had a dream at the time the flock conceived. Yeah, now. Wow, what was he doing? He was really, he was using his imagination. God, now, I, the first person I heard really emphasize this real well, and I've heard the story for years. Very phenomenal story in the Bible. But, but the first person I really heard really emphasize it was Dr. Yonggi Cho. Yonggi Cho. And so in Seoul, Korea, and one of the biggest churches in the world. And uh, Pastor Cho, wow, I mean, the church, million members. But he calls that the fourth dimension. In other words, allowing the spirit dimension to uh, incubate, so to speak, mm -hmm. like in Genesis 1, over your soul and over your life to... Uh, let the Word of God now produce a new thing in your life, new creation, that new blessing. That is incredible. Yeah, and yet um, the Word is a living thing, so you're really taking that Word and the life of the Word of God, and um, when you meditate on the Word of God, it captures your imagination, uh, but also the anointing, and then there, the Holy Spirit paints the picture of that happening in your life. It's really a picture of Mark eleven twenty four, when what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like right in the middle of I believe I receive. And he says, you believe you receive first and then you will have. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people say, well, I'm not going to, you know, believe I receive something. And I'm, well, when I have it, I'll know. Well, that's not faith. Faith is I believe I receive it before it is uh, physically there in the natural. And so that's a part of meditation. Mm -hmm. So back to Jacob, <laughs> he had this, these flocks, yeah. these herds of a few animals, yeah. and he created with wood that reflected into the water. Yeah. And the wood was streaked and spotted, and, and yeah. it made a reflection into the water. And then when the cattle came there, to drink, they would mate as yeah. well. When they came to conceive there. Yes. And uh, so then Jacob just stayed with it. Yeah. He kept this image before him. Yeah. He was believing, but he was doing something about it. He wasn't just saying, okay, I'm going to get give me some spotted and streaked animals. <laughs> he said, I'm going to build something in my vision, I'm going to sit before it. Yeah. I'm going to meditate on this. Something new is coming to pass. And he actually produced a whole, fl a whole herd yeah. of cattle that he wanted yeah. to have. So something came out of nothing. That was really, um, he kind of set his salary based on, <laughs> you don't have to do give anything, just... Whatever increase there is, I'll just take a percentage of the increase. And so he, through his own spiritual imagination and his own faith, so to speak, he built that wall. And today you and I would build a wall of the promises the of God. God. And that word, uh, build that into your spiritual imagination. I remember going into my daughter's uh, closet and they're on... The wall, she had built a wall, so to speak, uh, a vision board. This is what I have. This is what I see. This is, and specific things. 
And then she began experiencing all those things coming to pass. And her little boy, uh, Landon, he said, he saw those things happening. He knew what she was believing. He knew what it said on that board. Mm -hmm. He saw that she was experiencing the answers to what she prayed for, what she had meditated on. And he said, Mama, I want one of those boards. Help me make a board for me. You know? yeah. And so I can become what God has for me to become. I can receive what God has for me to receive by changing our meditation, on our putting action mm -hmm. to our faith. Yeah. And yeah, and it's really not. It it's really not a mind over matter. Really, it is God's word yeah, over matter. Really, it is. Agreement. It is the the realm of the spirit and the power of the spirit. Uh, it's really uh, Romans eight two. The law of the spirit of life in Christ makes me free from the law of sin and death. And so, for a person to develop this mm -hmm. uh, through studying the Word of God and through meditating on the Word of God really can change their whole life, their future. Because the devil really knows that if he can like constantly harass you mentally and bring negative or bring negative pictures of yourself or see yourself with lack or doing without, then if he can uh, tempt you, try to get you those thoughts and suggestions, and really he can do all that because we're living in this world, mm -hmm. but really the greater one lives in us, Christ lives in us, and his word abides in us. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you want and it shall be done unto you. God is a creator. Yeah. From the very beginning, yeah. he began to create and to speak and see that it happened. Well, if we'll read his hmm. words, they're creative words. Um, a lot of people, you know, we have the healing book and people say, well, I'm, uh, I want to just uh, get that book. <laughs> I'm just going to get that book. <laughs> just yeah. like that book is going to produce something. But not until you open the book where the scriptures are written. Yeah. And even it's good to listen to the CD in the back. That's good. Yeah. That's a part. But the moment you put your eyes on the word of God, mm. there is like a transfer of faith. Mm. God's words are filled with faith. Yeah. And when we fill our eyes, our imagination, yeah. our hearts, our mouth with the word of God, it's got to come forth and, yeah. and healing or whatever mm. it is you yeah. need, you're meditating on, you'll produce it. God yeah. will watch his word yeah. to perform it. And there are several parts to meditation uh, on the word of God is your hearing and hearing uh, actually, your your eyes, which is your spiritual imagination, mm -hmm. that you begin to look and see yourself in that which is the eyes of your heart flooded with light. And so when that happens, now you can see the revelation of the Word is working in you mightily. And then your confession of faith. In other words, meditation means not only to think, mm -hmm. but it means to speak, actually. Speak. Mm -hmm. So it's a twofold thing that your meditation and your and your speaking, and as you're speaking the word of God, then your words have authority over thoughts. So you can literally change your thoughts with your words because that's the first exercise of your authority as a believer. So your authority as a believer, Mark eleven twenty three, you exercise that authority. If you do not exercise that authority in your thought life, you will not be able to exercise that authority in any other area of your life. Wow. So can you repeat what you just said? <laughs> Well, you exercise authority. The authority of the believer, so that's a part of meditation, is the speaking mm -hmm. part. And faith works by speaking. So Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, this is the authority of the believer, that whosoever shall say in the mountain, be removed, be cast, he shall not doubt in his heart, believe those things that he saith, come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. So three times he mentions the saying part. Mm -hmm. And so he says that authority is in the speaking so you can actually school yourself into faith with your own words. So uh, when you're dealing with thoughts or suggestions or imaginations. Or feelings. Our feelings. You exercise that authority over those thoughts with your words. If you do not exercise authority 
over your thought life, then you'll not be able to exercise your authority in any other area of your life because the power of as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so when you exercise the authority with your words in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus, I exercise authority that the love of God is in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Whatever thought or suggestion that you're the righteousness of God in Christ, whatever the enemy brings to your mind, you exercise authority immediately over that thought or thoughts. And once your authority is exercised in your thought life, now your mind comes into harmony with the Word of God. You know, Jesus exercised this and he taught it. Like you just quoted about uh, Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, where he said, have the God kind of faith take hold or lay hold mm -hmm. on God's yeah. faithfulness. So I like 22 because it seems that you are, that's the verse where you're getting a grip, where you're meditating on mm -hmm. the word. You're letting his thoughts overwhelm and overtake your imagination, where you're uh, looking away from every distraction. Mm -hmm. You're looking only Jesus, you're taking hold. It's a process right there yeah. of God's faithfulness. And as you do, you, it's no longer just your faith, but you have a hold of God's faith too. You have the faith of God. And then that faith, it speaks, it talks. And it's interesting to hear people uh, sometimes like, if you say, if, if maybe they may be struggling with uh, symptoms in their bodies, and they say, I'm going to be well. I'm just going to get well. Well, that's a good thing to say. But <laughs> we believe, Jesus said, we receive when we pray. Hmm. Mark eleven twenty four. So we're not going to get it. We believe we got it. Mm -hmm. So just that one adjustment of stopping saying, one day I'm going to get healed. You or, say, I'm I believe healed. I have I received. I have it. Once you say, I have it now, that word is no longer in the future somewhere or a yeah. big, you know, whatever. You've got it now. When you meditate in the word of God, God's word is faith words. It's, and faith is now. So you move from being a one day, I'm going to get it elusive answer into I got it. Yeah. I know I got it right now. It's in me and I have it now. I have healing. I have strength. Whatever it is you need, you got it because the word of God is alive and it's in you and it's now. Join Mark and Trina Hankins as we start the new year off with three days of teaching on the spirit of faith. Get ready to receive the word, have your faith ignited, and to break the barriers in your life in 2024. You don't wanna miss these powerful three days in our new conference center, January 9th through the 11th, 2024. For more information and to register, please visit markhankins.org. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, faith for every nation. Do you want to study the word on a deeper level? Do you want to grow in your revelation knowledge of the word of God? We have just what you're looking for. Dive into studying the word of God with the Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide by Mark Hankins. Compiled from more than 40 years of ministry experience, there are over 120 different translations included. Explore scripture after scripture on topics such as the Holy Spirit, righteousness, faith, and healing. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, understand who you are and what you have in Christ. Use this comprehensive guide in your daily Bible study. As Mark Hankin says, the whole Bible has the capacity to produce the faith for whatever you need to receive from God. Find out what the Word has to say about healing, joy, peace, and more. Sow it into your heart, let it take root, and watch it bear fruit in your life. Your gift of $50 or more will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers around the world. 
Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. For your gift of $50 or more, you will receive this special spirit-filled scripture study guide. Thank you, World Mission Partners. Together we can, together we will. So we brought you this program again because on how to meditate on the Word of God, to challenge every thought and every imagination, the way you see yourself, the way you see your future and your life will change as you meditate on the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will literally paint the picture of that word on your soul and on your mind. It literally even change your emotions while you're meditating on the word because it is a living thing. It's alive. The word has the life of God on the inside of it. And so as you meditate on the word of God, you'll move from just information or just theology and you'll move into reality. You move just from information to revelation knowledge of the Word of God. There's a big difference from just having Bible knowledge and having revelation knowledge because that's where faith comes from. As you hear the Word, feed on the Word, then faith springs. And you can tell when your faith rises up on the inside of you, everything else looks little and God looks big. So I encourage you to feed your faith, meditate on the Word, and the offer that we have for you, this will change your life. This book, I've had it out for for, I don't know, 30 years maybe. And it's called Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide. And it's a big notebook, a manual, got spiral bound. And you can just open it up uh, to any chapter. And it is actually the King James Version and 120 different translations of that scripture and studying on redemption. So you may go King James, then go to Amplified Bible, then go to William Barclay's translation, 120 different translations on redemption, what happened from the cross to the throne, the power of the blood of Jesus, to faith and how faith works, and all those different translations to the authority of the believer. One of my favorite chapters, the one on prayer, what Jesus taught about prayer, what the apostle Paul taught about prayer. And then when you get to the chapter on righteousness, Righteousness, the free gift of righteousness that is yours and the power of that righteousness that belongs to every believer through the blood of Jesus. When you meditate on that word and you feed on it, it brings your soul and your mind into agreement with a spiritual reality. We call that faith. And then your words begin to line up with the word of God. And I'll tell you, mountains are moving. Not all the mountains are external. There'll be a few mountains leave from your brain, from your mind. <laughs> Those kind of obstacles will be removed and you'll walk in the light and live in the light of the word, the light of redemption, the light of the love of God, the whole chapter on the God kind of love. So you got to get this book in order, uh, download the messages on meditation and this book, Understanding Who You Are in Christ, Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide, 120 different translations. Woo! I encourage you to get it. Order the book or you can call and order it right now and feed your faith and you'll rise up and mountains shall be removed. So until next time, I'm Mark Hankins. May God richly bless you. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ.